So today's podcast is brought to you by our sponsor, Scribafile. Listen or check the show notes for more information, but Scribafile.com. And if it's being wondered by you that, uh, you know, I can't do it when I mean to. We're going to talk about passive voice and active voice today. Because it's I Should Be Writing, episode 56 in season 17. Well, I should be writing. Hi, everybody. Welcome to I Should Be Writing, the podcast for wannabe, beginning, middle career fiction writers. I'm your host, Mer Lafferty. And yeah, I just threw that in there. I don't know why. This podcast has been around since 2005, from when I had not sold anything at all, except for some RPG work. And now I'm a fully published writer, so I'm still talking about it. Hopefully, people can uh, get something out of it. I don't know why I'm being all... I, I know what's going on with me. The, the, <laughs> what I'm working on right now is... Um, as a friend of mine said this morning, this novella has officially become a Jacob's Marley chain around my neck. Because I was looking at my rewrite and thinking... This pacing is off. It's all off. We've been talking about pacing. And it's off. So I sat down and I did the outline thing that we talk about sometimes doing uh, halfway through a project. And I'm mostly happy with the new outline, but this means I get to go back to square one and edit it to fit the new outline again. And I'm... It's getting to me. Uh, every other thing that comes up gives me the spike of, of guilt that I'm ignoring it because all I can really think about right now is this novella. And it's 20,000 words. It's supposed to not be as hard as a novel. Oh my God. <clears throat> yes, like an albatross. So um, I am getting work done. Still. So yeah, I want to talk about the good news part of the show. I don't think I have any because I just threw a dead albatross and a big old dream chain around my neck. But if y'all have any good news, I would love to hear it because we like to spread good news on this show. Because frankly, a lot of times these days, we don't get to hear a lot. And if you're listening to this later and you want to send me your good news, I would be delighted to read it on a future podcast. So uh, just because you're listening to this after it's live doesn't mean you can't participate. Catwood is up to 42000 on your new manuscript. That's amazing. Litropod might be buying a house. That, that counts as good news. It's certainly exciting. If you want to buy a new house, then yeah, it's good news. Tree Lobsters, I don't even want to read that. Oh, that's painful. But it's on point, so I'll say it. And you know what, y'all? I don't know why. But I have uh, been bad at hitting the yay button more than once in a stream. And I want to apologize for that. So, I just, uh... I don't know if it moved on my screen deck. I mean, I do know it moved on my stream deck, but there's also new overlay or being, having no anxieties about something and forgetting to hit the A button. But yay button for house and yay button for 2,000 words. Ooh. All right. Um, and you know, if you're dealing with a disappointment in your writing career, a rejection or a review or something and you don't want to talk about it here because you don't think it's good news because it sucks I'm just gonna hit the A button for you because you're a working writer and you deserve all the praise 
and support you can you can get. So this is a yay for everybody who needs it. I know I need it. So uh, I am excited to say that we have a sponsor. So a lot of people ask uh, how we can get build a writing group or find beta test beta testers. That's computer games, beta readers for your novel, or just how f how to find somebody to switch um, critiques with. And I've always given a couple of answers, but the answers are harder to come by now that it's pandemic time and lockdowns are starting up again. But we have our sponsor, Scribafile, which is apparently where you need to go. I checked it out. It's really robust. Um, they're a critique-based community, which means members sign up, post their work in progress, short story, novel, screenplay, whatever, and other writers give them feedback. Members join to improve their writing and general skills and help on projects like novels to meet other writers and make friends in a craft and a business that's largely solitary. Oh yeah, we know that. After they run through Scribafile, run work through Scribafile, members often go on to find agents and get their works published in all kinds of markets. It's been endorsed by Writer's Digest and NaNoWriMo, and it's been on multiple top 100 sites for writers kind of situation. So you can use the site for free, but a paid membership gives you lots of perks. So check it out, Scribafile.com. Thank you for your support, Scribafile, and uh, check it out, folks. And now I will read Tree Lobster's terrible, terrible comment. Oh wait, we got one more late breaking news. Someone in my writer's group just hit the USA Today's bestseller list. That's amazing! <laughs> and saw, uh, Tree Lobster saw a review of an anthology I contributed to last year. The reviewer called out my story in particular. That's a good feeling. Congrats, Tree Lobsters. Okay, Tree Lobster says, Difficulty can be had by someone whose writing is being intentionally written in passive voice, voice by them. And I think right there it just shows all the things wrong with passive voice. Thank you, Tree Lobsters. I used to think that if I wanted to keep something secret that would be an appropriate part of passive voice. I wanted to say the door was opened or the case was unlocked because I wanted this focus to be on the um, object of the sentence. And what passive voice is, is it focuses on the object instead of the subject. The subject is Mer opened the door. Mer's the subject, opens the verb, the door is the object. So, subject, verbs, ob object. When you write in passive voice, you say, something happened to object. Was there a subject around? We don't know. And the best way to find a use for it is if you go into politics. Because Unless you want to be incredibly divisive, like some people have in the past five, six years, overall politicians don't really like to finger point too much. There's a lot of, oh, this happened. Mistakes were made. Phone calls were not made. And they never say who made the mistakes, who made the bad call. And, um... It is a tool in writing because it can switch the focus of what you're trying to say. Yeah, not only politicians, but uh, academic writing and IT work. Yeah, it has to do with, it, it's really, if you're, if you're doing something like IT work or academic writing, you don't always know your subject. So you're just saying an object and something about it, and when the um, person comes around to actually become the, ob the subject, that's my theory. 
of why it works there. With politicians, it just, they don't want to finger anybody because they probably did it themselves or didn't do it. Oh, science procedural writing. So here we go. We got a lot of people bringing up places where passive voice is used. Now, on one hand, you want to say, nobody's saying fiction. And that's because overall, we want our fiction to say, Billy shot the intruder. And you want to say, it's a story about Billy. You got to put Billy in there. Good old Billy. And um, if you say the intruder was shot, it's purposefully, that's what it feels like. It's purposefully holding something back. But if you are including politicians, IT work, academic writing, science procedural, if you're including that in your fiction, you need to know how to do it because that will make your fiction read a little bit more real, despite making everyone cringe when they actually do read it. But, you know, it is a tool like adjectives and adverbs. And I believe the tools always have their uses. Just a lot of people use them too much and then they get a bad rep for being a tool. And I've gone into the other use of the word tool. So yeah. Um, sorry, I just made a terrible joke and I'm not pleased with myself. I'm going to have some water because that will make it better. Oh, good one, tree lobsters. There were certain errors made during the surgery during which the patient's vitality was misplaced. Yeah, I don't want to say who cut that artery. It's a lot it's a lot more direct and I think that threatens people. It's kind of become this like that's why it's called passive aggression when you're not directly attacking. So, it's uh it's along the same lines. But I remember when I was looking at, uh, if, if you're new here, I have had several agents and the reason why I have had several agents, none of which are a bad, it's, it's not a bad reason for me. It's not a bad reason for them. It's just, I've had a lot of bad luck. And, um, anyway, one of my previous agents, I kind of knew that the writing was on the wall when the writing was in my manuscript and she changed an active verb to a passive verb. And I'm thinking, you're supposed to be checking this out. This, this is your job to catch this stuff. Thank you, Joey T. Spanish doesn't like passive voice to the point where teachers won't teach you how to use it. That's, wow. So, one thing you want to do is, if you're worried about your own verb usage, again, this is a tool you use during editing. This is not something you worry about while writing. I wish I were writing right now. <laughs> a friend of mine this morning told me, he's like, look, just get it done and you can edit it later. I'm like, this is the edit pass. I can't, I can't vomit any more words out. This all has to be detailed and good. I hate editing. I hate it. Hmm. <clears throat> Sorry. Anyway. <laughs> what were you talking about? Passive voice? Yes. So if you want to, if you're worried about your own usage, there are some words you can search for in your manuscript. And a lot of them are words like was and will. Now granted, you'll be using those words properly a lot too, but if anything says the car was dented or the dog was fed, if it's, you know, a subject, if it's an object and then verb and then no subject, that's what you're looking for. And the way to search for that is usually the word was or will. If I'd prepped better, I would have come up with a big long list of words, but it's really good to start with those. Also, a good thing to do is search for 
senses, like see and hear, because it's a lot stronger, a uh, lot weaker to say. He saw the door swing open, then the door swung open. Because if you have a point of view person there, then they're already seeing it, so you don't need to say that. There's another way to tighten your writing. A little off topic, but you know. I told you, my brain is like bathing in the primordial ooze of this novella, and it's never going to get out. This will be my hell. But anyway! Yeah, sorry. Um, does anybody have any questions about passive voice before I continue? Because it is one of those things that we say a lot. Sometimes people don't fully grab it. And that's why it's another flossing type topic because it's one of the things people always talk about and maybe don't actually pay attention to do. Novella. Thank you, Joey T. Patcher. <laughs> Ironically, passive voice is used on a lot of government documents. They just prefer it that way. Well, exactly. They don't want to you know, they, they just want to say something happened instead of somebody did something because that's a lot more active, accusatory, finger pointing, stuff like that. What are the best reasons for using passive voice? Where can it be effective? Excellent question, Tree Lobsters. If you're trying to write something that is like the other things we said, academic writing or politicians. If you're trying to put words in a politician's mouth in your story, then that is one of the Weasley things they do. They're just going to use passive voice the whole way through to avoid po pointing fingers. And I think if you really do want to talk about the object of something and leave the subject a mystery, then that's one of those things where you can do that if that's what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, but it's not, again, it's not a tool you want to use all the way through. Because there is a stronger way, even if you want to say, the box was opened. So yeah, those, those are what I have. Is the, those are the instances. But I think just, it is good to get rid of them, but they're, they do have their, their moments where they're good. Usually when quoting other people's writing, I guess. Uh, any tips about finding passive voice in your manuscript during an editing pass? Well, like I said, search for was. Um, that'll flag a bunch of them. Also, will and be. Those are good words to search for. The door will be opened. I don't know why I'm concentrating on this door. The box was opened. It was an act of God. <laughs> well, there you go. So yeah, see, everything we're saying here is, um, it's like you put the object and then the verb, and then the sentence is done. God opened the box. Exactly. Or even an act of God opened the box. It's, there are ways to fix it. I used to think it was, it was hard. So, 10% uh, solution has a good list of words to search for, including was, will, sensory words, etc. Yes. Uh, I, I, I have not heard of the 10% solution, so I must check out. But yeah, the way, to, the way to make your writing stronger is to get rid of was and will and he saw, she heard. And, yes, the, the passive voice places the emphasis in a different place, but it's situational. It's still, there is someone or something doing some sort of action that is being left out of that sentence. Okay, yeah, please tell us more about the 10% um, solution thing. So I would love to, to read more about that. But I'm going to end the podcast version of the show here. Thank you for listening to I Should Be Writing. If you want to get in touch with me, you can email mightymer at gmail.com or check out merverse.com for all my projects and my books, podcasts, magazine. I do a lot of stuff. 
If you want to support the podcast, you can support via twitch.tv slash mightymer, patreon.com slash mightymer, jemmy, coffee, I just mightymer the whole way down. And, um, yeah, if you've got any questions, please tell me, or you can ping me on Twitter, mightymer again. And that's it. I will see you next Tuesday live or a little bit later in the week if you're listening to this podcast. Because you should be writing. Do I do this to myself? This podcast is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you would also like to join the Ink Stained Fabulists, go to patreon.com slash mighty on that shelf on the spine of a paper bag. A paper bag.